Welcome. When we were just up here, I was talking with uh, Jonathan Fielding, one of the medalists that we'll be introducing uh, later uh, this morning. And he, he mentioned to me that when he was a student here, Dr. Martin Luther King spoke in this chapel, and he heard him speak. And I think uh, the chaplain's question, where, where am I? Uh, we are in a place that has been graced in a, a remarkable way by a remarkable person. And even half a century later, I think we should all think about that and, and feel that, if only for a moment. It's really wonderful to be with you all today. Um, we're gathering together to commemorate the start of the year. Now, for those of you who are seniors, this is the last lap of a journey through Williams that I imagine already feels much shorter than you expected it to. For those of you in the graduate art program, uh, it's either the beginning or it's the beginning of the end. And for those of you in the Center for Development Economics, you're one month, one month into a short and incredibly intense experience here. But wherever you are in your journey, your time remaining here at Williams isn't very long at all. And it's well worth asking what it's best to do with that time and what opportunity that time represents. When you do leave here, of course, you'll be leaving with a degree. But more importantly, you'll leave having been part of a remarkable community. To be sure, this is a community that, in evolving ways, will be yours for the rest of your life. But it's a community that means the very most right now when you are fully in it. So what does it mean to be part of a community, to contribute to its health, to move it forward? A real community is more than the sum of those who make it up. It's those individuals plus the connective tissue that between them. In fact, a great community is mostly connective tissue. A great community is not simply a collection of different people. It's the multitude of links across all of those differences. And these links depend more than anything else on our commitment to the truth that everyone here is equally human. Each body in our community containing a self whose view of the world is as deserving of respect and honor as is our own. And the truest test of this, of this commitment is how we react to and engage with those people who are the most different from our own selves. Our community, of course, is full of differences. We have people from vastly different backgrounds, some of us with virtually no shared life experiences before being thrown together at Williams. And we also have differences that might seem trivial in any great scheme of things such as cultural or religious imperatives for particular food or dress or customs concerning personal interactions. But experience teaches us that all these differences, large and small, can pose challenges for us. We can so easily make groundless assumptions about each other, so quickly confuse comfortably simple caricatures with the real, complex, fully human people we find before us. We think we already know who's on the other side of the table. And so we may sadly neglect to find out. And here's another hard truth about Williams. Sometimes we are so busy congratulating ourselves on our inclusiveness that we're not good at seeing or admitting when we're really being driven by our prejudices. Now, of course, none of this is unique to Williams. But I believe that here at Williams, this very human weakness is one that every single one of us shares, students, faculty, staff. And that gives every single one of us the marvelous opportunity to learn to be better. So here's our assignment for the year, the most important thing that we will all do. Find someone whose background or beliefs aren't just different from yours, but which make you truly uncomfortable. If you believe firmly in a woman's right to choose, find someone who's equally resolutely opposed to abortion. If you think Ted Cruz would be the ideal next president of the United States, find someone who supports Bernie Sanders with the same passion. Heck, and here's a hard one for me. If you grew up your whole life rooting for Carolina basketball, find a dookie. <laughs> find someone whose customs are truly strange to you even better, someone whose customs you find genuinely off-putting 
and be honest with yourself about that. And then, equally honestly, have a conversation with that person. Don't just listen politely to what they have to say, waiting for your turn to say the opposite. Rather, listen with a hunger to know who they are and why they believe or act as they do. Equally important, be patient with and gracious toward the questions they will have of you. Grant them the safety to acknowledge their own ignorance and the information to address it. Then find another person and a third one. Once you're committed to doing this, you won't want to stop. You'll know that you're getting the very best education that Williams can offer you. And let me be clear, this conversation has to be personal and it has to be private. Email and social media connect us in all sorts of wonderful ways, but for serious engagement with another human being, there is no substitute for being face to face. That's the least anonymous form of interaction, the very antithesis of yik yak. And yeah, I know about yik yak. <laughs> <laughs> And we owe each other the respect not to broadcast later what someone else asked, or said, or didn't say. There is no room in such a real and personal conversation for public performance of any kind. So how do I know how rewarding it is to learn in this, in this way? Well, for the past few years, we've had an annual event called the Human Library. I'm sure that some of you have taken part. In the Human Library, you can check out a human book for half an hour and ask any question you like. The less you know about what's already in the human book, the more you want to read that book and learn more, the better. In the past years, I've checked out transgender person, and I've checked out Iraq war veteran. In these cases, my goal happened to be address my own ignorance rather than discomfort, but the impact on me was equally profound. Where once all I knew were labels, now I saw whole people. Please take me seriously and do this. But don't do it for me. Do it for yourself. And do it for Williams. I worry that we may be losing our way here, here and throughout America. I worry that we are in danger of forgetting our most basic commitment to each other, which is to see and understand each other as human beings. You can lead us back. You need to lead us back. Let that be your legacy to Williams. Whether we allow everyone to bring their whole selves to Williams, whether in fact we embrace that idea, is a profound test of ourselves as members of this community. Even more, it's a test of Williams as a whole. And do this for the world. Because if you want to leave Williams and make the world a better place, there is nothing you can bring to that mission that is more important than your ability and your eagerness to reach across the divides that increasingly isolate us. If we can treat those who are the most new to our communities, and whose ways are the most different, and who are the most vulnerable among us, with more grace, and with more generosity, and with less judgment, we'll be a better world. We'll certainly be a better Williams. So that's your job for this year. Yes, do well in your classes and compete hard in your sports. Renew your spirit with art and with music. And yes, you'll need to figure out what comes next, nine short months from now. But before you leave this Purple Valley for good, learn what you truly came here to Williams, and not someplace else, to learn. And then let me know how it goes. Have a great year.